Secre did have 80 plus yards in the opener against John Carroll. Now Kenny Reardon today with 75 rushing yards. A season high for him and we are underway. Case will have the ball to start play in the third quarter. They deferred to the second half. Calabrese from the 12 out across the 25 to the 30 and out near the 33 yard line before he's finally tackled by Skyler Montefalco of Chicago. And we are underway here in half number two. Case leading it by a score of six to nothing and they will try and widen that margin here at the outset of the third quarter as they will come out offensively first and 10 from their own 33. Very quick first half. We played the first half in just over an hour. And it has to do with a lot of the ground being eaten up by Case Western. Eric Olson will hand it off to Kenny Reardon. He powers forward across the 35. Gets out close to the 36 yard line before he is knocked down. Defensive coverage by Danny Polineski. Chicago with a three game winning streak in tow as they Roll in here to Case Field. Spartans have won five straight. 14 and a half minutes to go, third quarter. Lajeunesse in motion. Olsen will hand it to Reardon again. Nice hole, it gets to the 40 yard line, out to the 41 yard line. Again, it's Polineski on the stop. And a nice run by Reardon. He'll be short of the first down. And it'll be second down and, or I should say, third down and two. Well, Case is picking up between four and five yards a carry. I can't imagine them trying to do anything overly fancy here. Allow the opportunity just to pick it up. Case energized today by the return of Tony Opperman to the offensive line. And this time, they give the ball to Reardon. And he is hit quickly in the... Backfield, he'll go down for a loss. Skyler Montefalco there. And he's going to have to do a lot to get himself out of the doghouse of Dick Maloney. A mental mistake by Montefalco cost Chicago six, possibly seven in the first quarter with his taunting penalty on an interception return. Case loses three. Olsen will punt it on fourth down. He gets the punt away, kicks away from Brizolare, goes out of bounds. And we'll see where the linesman will mark it. And it looks like it will be the 43-yard line of the Maroons. And that's where the Chicago offense will take over, down by a score of 6 to nothing, with 13-15 to play here in the third quarter on senior day at Case Western Reserve. Now Montefalco could have picked up another penalty there. He went after Kenny Reardon while the kick was in the air. Kind of blindsided Reardon. Kevin Shelton comes back out at quarterback for the Maroons. He started the game. We then saw Vincent Cortina, the sophomore, finish out the half. Shelton, the starter, is back in. A dark was in the backfield, tries to run left, looking for a block, and Michael Harris wipes him out back near the 42-yard line. Lost oh, yeah. a yard on the play. <laughs> Operative word there would have been just smothered. The entire case defensive front did a nice job of stringing it out, and as a dark will went to cut it back, Harris just engulfed him and put him down in the backfield. Michael Harris, just a junior out of Shaker Heights. Recorded a big play there. Second down and 12. They lose two. The football back at the 41-yard line. Chicago operating in its own territory. Case leading it by a score of six to nothing. Here comes Case on the blitz. They grab Shelton, and he will go down. And that's going to be at least a half for Dale English. Jake Adams got in there, English was there, Kevin Nassim also following up on the play, and it uh, is all the way back to the 38, so they lose three on the play. That should go down as a half sack for Dale English. He'll be one and a half shy of tying the school record in sacks, which is 30 and a half by Brian Calderon. Case has gone to their dime package. Six defensive backs in the ballgame, including Ferguson playing the hero position. Just under 12 to play in the third quarter. Case up by six. They'll go to a dark on a screen pass out to the far side of the field. And he is hit and knocked down. Almost looked like he lost his footing a little bit as Kevin Nossum closed in on him. Tried to swim move, but looked like he was trying that on sand. And just never could get himself 
turned around. Really picked up nothing on the screen pass. Case holds on third down, and they'll force a fourth and 14 from the 39-yard line. Madarqua picked up a yard on the play. Here is the kick from Sauer. Almost blocked, but he got it away. Calabrese from the 30, and it had good hang time there, and he is hit and knocked down right after making the catch by Michael Gilliam. Gilliam, the sophomore out of Orchard Lake, Michigan. He comes in and records the tackle. And the case offense will come back out with 11-12 to play here in the third quarter. Six to nothing Spartans. First and 10 from the 32 yard line. And Eric Olson and company will try and move the ball down the field and add to this six to nothing lead. Spartans have yet to score a touchdown today. Two field goals by Dan Vassell. They'll give it to Secray on the first play of the drive. Gets away, gets to the 40 yard line. Now to the 41 before he is finally ridden down to the ground. Nicely done by Emmett Carrier to finally wipe out the play. But a big gain there for Secre. He picks up nine. And it's second down and one. No huddle for Case right now. Olsen hands it to Secre again and gets the first down as he gets a hard-earned two yards. And it's first and ten for the Spartans. Happy to welcome in Dan Whalen to the booth. Visit with us here a little bit on Senior Day. Great to see you again, Dan. Dave, thanks for having me back. It's uh, always nice to get up here and talk to you guys for a few minutes. How did you feel on Senior Day? Uh, kind of just surreal. Like it, it went by so fast. You know, four years, uh, it, it was, it flew by, and I couldn't believe that you know that we had played forty some odd games in that span of time, and and uh, that it was finally coming down to the wire. So it, it's a it's a strange feeling, and. Uh, I mean, these guys are, are playing very well, just, just like we were during our career. So it's, it's nice to see something we started keep going. Secre keeps his legs moving and uh, grinds out seven yards. It'll be second down and three for Case at the 49-yard line. Case operating at its own territory, leading it by a score of six to nothing. Ten minutes to go here in the third quarter. Reardon is back in in the backfield behind Olsen. They'll give it to Kenny. Runs behind Lajeunesse, the tight end, and gets one out of it, out to the 50. And it will be a third down coming up for Case. You guys uh, on senior day knew you had a shot to get to the postseason and possibly host a game, and, and then that became your final home game eventually. But uh, senior day is very, very special, isn't it? It is. It's a, it's a neat thing, especially here at this great facility. And uh, just the way, like I said before, the way we've been building things over the past six years or so, uh, it's, it's great to see it, you know, winning become the norm and, and become expected around here. Bryce Coleman wide open in the middle of the field. Olsen finds him, and he is tackled inside the 25 all the way down to the 21-yard line, a big gainer for 29 yards to the senior tight end out of Solon, Ohio, Bryce Coleman, and he was wide open. Eric Olson hurries to the line. No huddle offense for Case. First and 10 from the Chicago 21-yard line after the big hit to Bryce Coleman. Olson will go back, hand it to Reardon. He hits the pile and will go nowhere as they force him to the ground. Now you were a guy who liked to scramble around back there and buy some time. How did it feel when you finally locked eyes with a guy as wide open as Bryce Coleman was? Yeah, uh, you know, it's nice. The thing that I was always focused on when I was running around with the ball is I always keep my eyes upfield just because you never want to tuck the ball away and, and take, you know, take that uh, advantage away uh, from yourself because if you're, if you're running down the line of scrimmage and, and you're tucking it away, the defense is going to come up and and you're kind of one-dimensional in that respect. But if, if you keep your eyes downfield, it forces them to, to play their hand, and, and a lot of times they freeze, and you can buy yards on the ground. They definitely lost track of Coleman. Second down and 12 now. They'll swing it out to Metalsitz and let him try and run with it, but they catch him on an ankle tackle now near the 21-yard line. Defensive coverage by Chicago's Stephen Murphy, the junior cornerback, and he hauls down Metalsitz. Boy, Middlesitz is a guy who has bided his time and waited around behind some terrific receivers here, Dan, and he's having a great year. He's over 40 catches now on the season. Yeah, we've uh, we've had a lot of good ones, and it's about uh, about time Brian got his shot to be the number one go-to guy, and 
uh, it's nice to see him doing well and you know uh, it just seems like he's been here forever I guess is is uh, is how I look at it just because it seems like you know he was here he got here my junior year so we played two years together and now this is his senior year two years later so it just seems like he's he's been here so long but it's, it's really been four years so I guess it's a different perspective when I'm Absolutely. playing and to when I'm to when I'm not and watching so well they go to metal sits again he makes the catch down at the 16 and that's short of the first down it's fourth and five for case and they will send in Dan Vassell for his third field goal attempt of the day fourth and five from the 16 they will hold this one at the 23 so it's his second 33 yard field goal attempt of the day and the kick might have been partially blocked looked like the hold was good by Calabrese but I think Emmett Carrier got in there and got a hand on it and it deflects it short and so that one is no good and it stays a six to nothing ball game seem to be having a little trouble um, getting the ball in the end zone today and looks like we got a gift uh, right before the second half or first half ended on that taunting penalty no because doubt about that uh, if that had landed we'd probably be playing from behind right now that is definitely going to be a key moment in this game as Chicago comes back out with 703 to play beautiful bright sunny day here in Cleveland today a little chilly at the low 40s at game time but the uh, sun is out for this UAA opener Six nothing Spartans here come the Maroons now Cortina is back in at quarterback the sophomore they go to the tight end out across the 20 yard line out near the 23 yard line that's Tom Beamender for the tight end who makes the catch and then rumbles out close to the 24 yard line it'll be a pickup of four yards Chicago's going to have to start putting the ball in the air a lot more because they are having no luck on the ground I think they have uh, what is it 10 net yards rushing or 15 or so yeah, they it's pretty low held to just 80 yards in total offense at halftime but just have not been able to get anything going on the ground we well, talked about seemed like metal sits has been here forever how about Francis Adarqua as there's an interception by Jordan Banky throw from Cortina looking for Beeman Durfer again was short and Banky goes diving down there and picks it off and the offense of Chicago is just standing there stunned they're they're thinking to hit the ground but the referees are disagreeing. Banky's first interception of the season. He just got under that ball. It was practically on his back and landed on his chest. The ball did when he hauled it in. Interception for Case. They will have it at the 33-yard line. This is the time of the game when you usually say, see Coach Debs uh, take a shot downfield and, and try to stick a fork in him as, as he likes to do after a big play on defense. Well, Olsen will work from the shotgun. Kenny Reardon is in the backfield three receiver set Olsen goes for metal sits hits him at the 25 and then he's forced out of bounds and it will be a pickup of about eight Dan how did it feel obviously when the offense comes off you guys huddle up on the sideline uh, behind the bench and you guys are talking to your position coaches and and whatnot sort of planning for the next series and you get that call that a big decision a big defensive play has been made and you got to rush back out there it's cool. I mean, it's uh, it's nice. Uh, the first of all, the last thing I want to do is talk to coaches right after I got off the field. So I always want to go over the bench and get my wind and sit down for a few. And uh, but you know what? When you when you have a play like that that sparks your team, you you, you drop the adjustments on the yeah. sideline. You get back out there and you, you go make a few plays. So uh, it, it, it's just you know it's something we've been able to do over the past few years is tur uh, get turnovers on defense. Our defense is, is uh, uh, they take chances. And they make big plays, and, and that's just the Coach McCullough's style. He likes to he likes to force QBs to, to make bad decisions, and you saw one there. Mm -hmm. Dan Whalen visiting with us for a few minutes here as Case and Chicago do battle here. Five and a half to go here in the third quarter. Kenny Reardon runs it inside the 25, down to the 23. So it's now first and 10 Case. After the first down run by Kenny Reardon, they'll give it to Kenny again. He gets down close to the 20 before he is hit and knocked down nice tackle in there by Polineski he's a nice defensive player for Chicago turns into a five yard pickup for Reardon he is running the ball well today closing in on that 100 yard mark second and five case in the red zone at the 18 yard line I wouldn't be surprised if this turns into fourth down territory for the Spartans here, just the way uh, Coach Deblak's probably reacting to that last field goal block. 
Four and a half to play in the third quarter. Case six, Chicago nothing. Reardon running on the right side is hit and knocked down. They try to spring him out to the right side. He did not uh, turn the corner. Tried to cut it back in. Might have picked up a yard there. It'll be third down and four for Case. Now we have number five up here in the booth. We also have five on the field. Eric Olson having a productive day today. They have not yet punched it in the end zone despite moving the ball well. Two field goals, six to nothing case. Look for a runoff tackle to the right here. They're overloaded with the double tight ends to the right side. They're going to pass it. He'll step back and throw it for the end zone and metal sits on a little post pattern there right on the hash mark. It's incomplete. Trying to thread it in there. Nice defensive coverage for the Maroons. Right on metal sits back with Skylar Montefalco. When, as Ed mentioned a few minutes ago, he's going to have to make all kinds of defensive plays to make up for that uh, taunting penalty. Fourth down, and here comes Dan Vassell now. Fourth and three for Case. The football is at the 16. I'm, honestly, I'm surprised to see this field goal unit out here with the way the defense is playing so well. You got four yards to go on their in, in their red zone. I, I would, you know, I would think Coach Deblack would want to go for this one. But 33-yard attempt. Here is the kick. It is no good. He hooked it off to the left, and the Spartans failed to score. Dan Vassell now two for four on the day. 3:44 to play here in the third quarter. Dan, it's great to talk with you. We uh, welcome you back anytime. Hopefully, we'll. Somehow find another home game here at Case Field this year to talk to you again. Hey, you never know. That would be awesome. But uh, these three year, these these UAA games are, are the important and tough ones. So uh, hopefully we can pull this out. And the defense is uh, is keeping us in this game pretty well. So uh, yeah, it's, I appreciate you guys having me and uh, let Ed get back here and, and uh, break this one down for you. All right, that's Dan Whalen. Always great to talk with the former All American quarterback at Case Western Reserve. Taking this one in here today at Case Field. They run the football. That's Zach Ross Nash, the fullback. And he gets out close to the 21. Another good push by the Spartans defensively. Boy, they are having a great day. Rich Doolin, Dale English, Adam Watson, Michael Harris on that front line for the Spartans. Kevin Shelton is back in at quarterback. 3-10 to go in the third quarter. Shelton in the shotgun. Five receiver set over the middle for Brizolara. He has it. Davis tries to track him down from behind, and he does just short of midfield. This one gets out to the 47-yard line. 26 yard pickup on the connection from Shelton to D. Brizolara. And that one was almost a game breaker for the former Aurora star, D. Brizolara. First and 10, Chicago, 242 to play, third quarter, 6 0 case. Zach Ross Nash carrying, and Case catches him back at the 45 yard line. Kevin Nossum wraps him up. Jake Adams was there, as well as Dale English for Case. Second down and 12 from the 45-yard line with 2.15 to go here in the third quarter. Senior day at Case Field. Chicago football, 6-0 Case. Shelton takes the snap. Goes back to throw over the middle, and Matt Davis knocks it away. Late flag comes in on the play as Davis knocked it away from Keegan Cisneros. And a late flag comes in from the head linesman. And this one will likely go against Matt Davis. We don't have a replay on it, but it uh, looked like a good play by Davis, but they felt uh, he got uh, in there too early and made contact with Cisneros. And it's a pass interference call against the Spartans. It was a real late call, Dave. That flag came in from the side judge. 
I don't know if he was fishing for his flag or or what, or yeah, trying to decide whether or not it really was, but the flag came in late. Bobola's is at the 45 yard line, first and 10. They throw it to Brizolari, makes the catch, look out, he's on the sideline, 40, 30 to the 20, and he is hit in bounds and knocked down. Jake Adams and Kevin Nassim caught up to Brizolara, but he gets into the red zone on another big play. This one also goes for 26 yards all the way down to the 19. Well, Kevin Nassim was looking for a hold inside. That's what he's saying right now. He's, he's signaling over to Coach McCullough that he thought he got hooked up. And from the looks of it, when he was outside the 30-yard line, Nassim turned to try to pursue that play. And he looked like he had a lineman get up underneath his shoulder pads, but no call, and Brizolara takes it inside the 20. 128 to go in the third quarter. Kevin Shelton, the Chicago quarterback, does not delay. get the playoff. It's a delay of game against the Maroons. That was a different look for Chicago as well. They came out in a two tight end set, and they had a fullback and a stacked eye. The only receiver in the in the formation was Brizolara, and he was split to the near side, the short side of the field. One twenty-two to go in third quarter. Six to nothing case. The football is marked now at the 24-yard line. Wind kicking up a little bit now and blowing into the face of Chicago as they move left to right. Back to throw Shelton. He's in trouble. Hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. Rich Doolin and Dale English both back there to haul down Kevin Shelton and break up that play. He was lucky to get it away before the sack. Boy, oh, it looks like <laughs> Dale English, somebody fired Dale English up on, on senior day because he has spent probably more time in the Chicago backfield than he has on the line of scrimmage this afternoon. Second down and 15. Shelton in the shotgun. They'll give a little shovel pass to a dark way. He gets back to the 25, but Dale English is right there to catch him and force him to the turf. A case was running a stunt up front. Michael English crossed over in front of English. English circled back around to his right and was standing there waiting for a dark one who took that inside shovel pass. Third down and 17. It loses two yards. Boy, after the big gainer by Brizolara. This has not gone well for Chicago, but they are a dangerous team. Anytime Brizolara is on the field. Five wides, Case is caught in a formation they don't want to be in. Third and 17, there is the pass downfield for Brizolara. He's looking for a flag, the pass overthrown. Nassim and Dieter on the defensive coverage. And uh, no flag comes out. Brizolara thought there was some contact there as the ball was arriving though, Ed, it was well up above Brizolara. I don't think it was catchable well, at all. They, I don't know who was on the inside on the under coverage, but they, they got the back of Brizolara's shoe as they were running together. So if anything, there was contact, but it was truly incidental. Here's a field goal attempt by Jeff Sauer. This will be a 43 yard attempt. The kick is up and it is way off to the left. He hooked it wide left. I'm not sure that the holder Cody Edgeworth got that down the way he wanted it. And the kick is no good. 43 yard attempt fails. And Case will have the football at the 26 yard line. And uh, the six to nothing lead still intact here with 29 seconds left in the third quarter. Another quick quarter for Case Western. Here come the Spartans on offense. Olsen takes the snap and hands it to Reardon. Power running straight ahead, gets out to the 32-yard line. Six-yard run for Reardon, and that will probably be the final play of the third quarter, and it will be six to nothing case through three. The Spartans have played very well today but they are anything but comfortable heading into the all-important 
fourth quarter. We'll be back with more on Senior Day at Case Field in just a moment on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. This year, Qdoba will cater like 10,000 parties. Where? When? I'm there. Well, these parties are hypothetical. I was just talking about Qdoba catering. Hot taco bars with fire-grilled chicken and marinated steak, flour tortillas, and taco shells. You'll also get their hand-smashed guacamole, cheese, sour cream, lettuce, and salsa. They'll deliver to your home or office, and they'll even set it up. Can I bring a guest? Oh, boy. Visit Qdoba.com today for more information about Qdoba catering. Qdoba Mexican Grill. More to explore. Well, 15 minutes showing on the clock. The Spartans leading it by a score of six to nothing. And Matt Doherty, the Spartans continue to play very well defensively as they have all season long. <laughs> right now, two net rushing yards on the day for Chicago. Two. 42 total plays for the Maroons. They've only gained 135 yards. Manny Secre carries for Case, cuts it back inside, and ends up churning out first down yardage as he gets across the 35 out to the 37-yard line. They needed four. Secre, the freshman out of Miami, got a five. Well, you look at Secre now. He's at 77 yards for the ball game on 17 carries. And Kenny Reardon, 15 carries, and he's at 95 yards. There's a chance that Case could have two backs go over 100 yards in the ball game. Magister in at tight end. Reardon checks in at halfback. They will go to Kenny Reardon. He covers the ball, bounces to the outside, has good running room, but ends up stepping out of bounds as he nears the 45-yard line of the Spartans. They ran that sweep to the short side. If Reardon had the ability to bring that to the near side of the field, he probably would have stayed in bounds. But now they say he stepped out at it the 43. So it ends up a six yard gain, second down and four for the Spartans. They lead it by a score of six to nothing, moving left to right against the wind here in the fourth quarter. Eric Olson will hand it to Secre, runs behind Magister, turns the corner to the 45, out to the 46 yard line, and he is tackled right there. Boy, I'd like to see Secre come to that, make a decision quickly. And there he thought about cutting it up and then wanted to go to the outside. If he makes a decision one way or the other, I think he picks up more yardage than he did. It was that slight hesitation that allowed the pursuit from Chicago to come and pick him up. Arlen Hill there on the tackle for Chicago. Third and one. They'll line up in a tight formation. Eric Olson will try and sneak this one ahead for the first down. Looks like he had it. Running behind a couple of big offensive linemen there. Tony Opperman still in the game for Case, making a return to the lineup after an early season knee injury appeared, or at least it was feared, ended his senior season, but he has come back in today. Anchoring that offensive line in front of Eric Olson. Quick update from Pittsburgh, Wash U at Carnegie Mellon this afternoon in the third quarter, Wash U 14. And Carnegie Mellon, seven. Secre gets the handoff, spins on first down, gets out close to midfield. He'll be short of the 50-yard line. Again, running right behind Tony Opperman. Second down and nine from the Case 49-yard line. Long way to go in this one, Ed, and uh, hardly comfortable right now at 6 nothing. Well, Case has had their opportunities here in the second half. They've missed two field goals. A 12-0 lead would much be much more comfortable for Case and the coaching staff than sitting currently at 6-0. Points at a premium, and this drive almost imperatively has to produce some points. Kenny Reardon with the football. He is hit as he crosses midfield. And a short gain. Skyler Montefalco made the first contact, and then Emmett Carrier wrapped him up and got him to the ground. And it's third down and seven for Case. Passing situation here, six to nothing Spartans, 12.40 to play. Here in the fourth quarter on senior day at sunny Case Field in Cleveland, Ohio. Secre is in the backfield to Olsen's right. Three receivers set, Olsen to throw it, good protection. They go to Metalsitz, but he overthrows Metalsitz and it's out of bounds. And 
It's fourth down at midfield for Case, fourth and seven. That was just a total misthrow. Olsen stepped into it. He had metal sits near the 40 yard line. And needed to put that one down closer to the numbers. Instead, it was up over his head and into the bench. So Olsen will punt. Mike Valeriano is the snapper. They'll get it back to Olsen. He kicks this one away. That might be Olsen's best punt ever. Drifts all the way back toward the 11-yard line where Brizolara catches it and runs out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Six-yard return. Olsen got a good punt off, and Brizolara with a short return. A high spiraling kick. 40 yards in the air on the punt. And a six yard return. And here come the Maroons offensively and they can tie with a touchdown. Six to nothing case. UAA opener today. First and 10 from the 17 yard line. Shelton is in for Chicago. He drops back to throw it. He will run it now and has wide open space in front. Gets to the 24 and is tripped up by Kevin Nassim. Well, Chicago ran all four receivers deep off the ball. That dragged the case zone a little deeper than they wanted to. The linebackers also drifted back. And when the protection broke down, lots of room in front of him. Well, he picks up seven on the scramble. Second down and three from the 24-yard line. Chicago operating in its own territory. Case leading at six to nothing, 11.34 to play. Here's the snap back to Shelton. He'll hand it ahead to the fullback, Zach Ross Nash, and he hits the wall and goes down. Rich Doolin in there on the stop along with Dale English. And Zach Ross Nash, 5'10", 190 out of Allendale, New Jersey. Third and two. Four minutes gone by here in the fourth quarter. Two field goals by Dan Vassell today. One of 33 yards, the second 29. Third and two, key down here for Chicago. They'll go to a dark risk screen pass. Gets to the 25, out to the 29, and out of bounds. That's good for first down yardage to the senior, Francis Adarqua out of Wheaton, Will, uh, Wheaton, Warrenville South High School in Wheaton, Illinois. Simple play there on third and two. They were just looking to get a dark in some space, let him make a move and get the first down. He picks up six on the little swing pass. Ryan Ferguson of the Spartans also out of Wheaton, Illinois. So that city well represented today. First and 10 for the Maroons. Ross Nash straight ahead, and he is hit and driven backwards and ends up going down in a heap back at the 25. They'll give him forward progress back to the line of scrimmage at the 30. Zach Ross Nash was carried backwards by about four case defensive players. Well, and that's the play where the whistle is late. And as a back, you just you're, you know that the defense is holding you up and spinning you around and poking at that football. That's when turnovers happen on a delayed whistle when you're fighting to get back to the line of scrimmage or for extra yardage. 9.40 to play, fourth quarter, six nothing case, Chicago ball. Back to throw Shelton, they come after him. He got it away to a dark one, a screen pass and gets out to the 32 and ahead to the 34 yard line. Nice Boy, open. Shelton was in trouble and got it away. Yeah, they. On a screen pass, ideally, you'd like your linemen to at least chip the defensive front four, and it looked like Chicago totally whiffed. Shelton was in trouble. He managed to get the football away. Dan Calabrese with a nice open field tackle. Corral to Darkwell before he could go any further. Third down and six. Shelton will work from the shotgun. He is a 6-2 junior. Adarqua is in the backfield. He was open on a screen, but they go for Brizolara, and it's too far downfield, incomplete. Shelton again takes a hit 
This time from Adam Watson and it's fourth down and they had a dark well wide open it. Yeah but I think Shelton locked into the fact that he wanted Brizolara deep and no matter what the situation he he saw Brizolara get a step and was going to throw it up and hopefully pick up some big yardage on third down. 8.46 to play in the fourth quarter. Case holds. They will get it back. Here is Sauer with a kick on the punt, and he will boot this one downfield over the head of Calabrese. This one takes a bounce, and it goes into the end zone. Chicago almost had a chance to down that one inside the five-yard line. Officially a 66-yard kick. Boy, that uh, was boomed downfield by Sauer. This guy is headed to an all-conference selection as a punter. Case will have it at the 20 as they bring it out after it bounced into the end zone. Well, and he's certainly not doing anything to decrease his standing nationally either. Sauer came in as one of the top kickers in the country. First and 10 Case. Now they have a chance to eat off some clock here. If they can put a long drive together, Olsen throws it out for lap Sevic, makes the catch out at the 25 and is hit out of bounds. That will stop the clock. Knocked out of bounds by Sevi Francis Shelley, the free safety. Case will be on the road next week in St. Louis, Missouri against the Wash U Bears. Two weeks from today at Carnegie Mellon against the Tartans to wrap up the regular season. Secre gets the carry. He gets close to the 28 yard line. Might have picked up two. Third down and two coming up for Case. Trying to pitch a shutout here today against the University of Chicago. They have been held to seven points. That is their lowest scoring output of the season. That was in the loss to Rochester back in week two. Well, I'm not talking about uh, Chicago. Also, seven points in their 49-7 loss against Wabash. Case has a false start at the left side of the line, left early. And this will mark uh, the football back five yards. Well, both teams had... Uh, Used to a little more offense. And today a defensive struggle, six to nothing. Seven and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. So what was a third and two becomes a third and seven. And that changes things. Case would like to keep the football here and eat up some time. Well, they've only had it for less than a minute on this possession so far. Key third down here, deep in their own territory at the 23-yard line. Eric Olson, as the play changed up, he glances over to the sideline, only five on the play clock. He's trying to get it, uh, the word spread around, and he has to take a timeout, and they just did get the timeout. Timeout came from the sideline. Coach Debs noticed it and called the timeout from the sideline. We have a timeout. We'll take one. As well, 7.07 to play in the fourth quarter. Spartan six, Chicago nothing. We'll be back with more in a moment on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its eight consecutive four diamond award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or personalized wedding? Choose excellence by choosing the Intercontinental Cleveland. Intercontinental's planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience that is proudly world class. For more details, call the Intercontinental today at 216-707-4100 to request a tour of the spectacular accommodations. Here we go, Case with the football and a six-point lead. Third down and seven from the 23-yard line of the Spartans. Eric Olson calls out the signals. Secre in the backfield. Nope, that's Reardon. Now they'll throw it downfield for Metal Sits, and it was up for grabs, and it's knocked down incomplete. Emmett Carrier 
close to his fourth interception of the season, but he is able to knock it down, and Metalsitz actually became the defensive back there, Ed, as he was going up there and well, had and Metal, Carrier in front of him. And Metalsitz couldn't legally have caught the football anyway as he had stepped out of bounds as he was running his route. The only way Metalsitz could have caught it would have been on the rebound. Here's Olsen with the kick, and it's a bad kick. He shanks it off to the left into the case bench. And Chicago with a gift here on the shanked punt. And they will take over. We'll see where the field judge marks this ball. It's at the 33-yard line of the Spartans. And that is a 10-yard punt. Well, as it's been all year, it's going to be the defense that needs to come up with another play. They had the miracle in Meadville. They held off a strong push from Worcester in the first half last week. We'll see if they can do it today. Shelton in trouble. Dale English grabs him. There's the sack by the senior. Dale English records the sack on Kevin Shelton. Boy, was that a shot in the arm for the Spartans right there. Well, and English just showed how strong he is. He literally brought down Shelton, one arm around his waist and the other arm just pushing on his shoulder pads. One and a half sacks today for Dale English. And now just a half sack shy of tying the school record in that category. 6.17 to play here in the fourth quarter. Second and 15 after a five yard loss. Shelton drops back to throw. He'll gun it downfield for Brizolara. The ball tipped, but now Brizolara makes the catch inside the 20 all the way down to the 16 yard line. The ball was smacked away and somehow it floated right into Brizolara's arms. De Brizolara makes the grab all the way down to the 16 yard line. First and 10, Chicago. Shelton drops back to throw. They'll go middle of the field again. The pass broken up by Jordan Banky. Looking for Tom O'Neill. First time they've thrown his way today. O'Neill, the freshman wideout out of Naperville, Illinois. And Banky on the defensive coverage, second down and 10. Well, Sheldon's going to have to pick other receivers because Case has now decided they're going to double cover Brizolara. Matt Davis is going to line up nose to nose with Brizolara on the line. Now they're going to shift back and let Gary Dieter have his chance with Brizolara, and then they'll double him over the top. Back to throw Shelton. They go to the tight end. Beamendurfer, he makes the catch, gets inside the five, and the Spartans drag him down before he can get to the end zone. Tom Beamendurfer makes the catch, and Chicago knocking on the door here. It will be marked at the four-yard line. First down for the Maroons, first and goal as they try and get on the board for the first time today. 5.25 to go, fourth quarter. K6, Chicago nothing. Kevin Shelton goes back, hands the ball to Adarqua. He wants to throw it and almost threw an interception. Jump pass after taking a couple of steps to the right. I'm not sure who he had in his mind. Eddie. Zach Ross Nash was the fullback who had come through the line and was near the goal line when Adarqua tried to throw it out there. and. It just got batted around like a ping pong ball in the in the fish fish bowls. Case holds on that play, second and goal from the four yard line. Well, I think Chicago realizes they're going to have to throw the football into the end zone. They're not going to be able to run it. Shelton's going to try it now. He goes to the back of the end zone and it's overthrown. Looking for Brandon Meckelberg under the goal post. And it's incomplete, third down and goal from the four yard line. Well, they're opening up the playbook and throwing to some guys we haven't seen them go for today. And now Chicago wants to talk things over. They have two shots here, Ed, and this may be their last shot. 
Well, and they're going to look at a way to free up Brizolara. At this point, they took their shots at other opportunities, seeing if they could catch Case sleeping. But at some point, they're going to have to go back to the confidence they have in Brizolara and their big-time scorer. And if that means running a little rub cross or a del little delay or even a, a uh, slant and go to the corner, something to get Brizolara open. And Case is going to have to be focused on him, and the other defensive backs are going to have to stay man-to-man -man with their players. We have 5-10 to go here in the fourth quarter. Case and Chicago today in a thriller in the UAA opener. Case with a five-game winning streak on the line. Chicago has won three in a row. It is third and goal from the four-yard line. They got a trips bunch triangle to the right. And they're going to try to rub Brizolara out of that on the screen. Here we go. Shelton on a little draw play to Zach Ross Nash. Powering forward. I don't think he got in. Case mm. wraps him up, and it'll be fourth down. Zach Ross Nash, after the play action fake, they handed it to him. And I think it was Kevin Nassim who made the first contact, and then he got a wave of help, Ed. And they'll use another timeout. They're going to look at it again. Well, if they've got a play that they're confident in, it's one they're going to have to go to right now. And I thought he was going to throw the football as he started to roll out and uh, ended up handing it to the fullback and just could not get any movement up front. Well, and Brizolara broke off that triangle trip formation as if he was going to catch a pass out on the flat and then come back in with his blockers. Both teams in uh, the huddles on the sidelines. 4.47 remaining in the fourth quarter. Next week, we'll be in St. Louis. That will be a 1 o'clock Central Time game in St. Louis, Missouri at the Francis Field. Historic Francis Field. The uh, little archway there, it says the Francis Field. Site of the 1904 Summer Olympics. Here we go. Fourth down and goal from the three. They snap it directly to Adarqua. He dives for the he goal didn't get line. That. The he Spartans didn't. stop him, and they come running off the field. Hands held high. The Spartans with a great goal line stand to keep Chicago off the scoreboard. Michael Harris was in the middle of that. Harris initially forced Adarqua wide, and the defense was there to smother him. And this one is turning into an instant classic. They go with the direct snap wildcat formation to Frankie Adarqua, the talented senior runner, and they have bottled him up today. Now Case has the ball at the one yard line, 99 yards ahead for the Spartans. And they hand it straight up the middle to Magister, the fullback, and he gets a maybe one extra yard to work with. But the math is there because Case needs two first downs to run this clock out. Chicago is down to one timeout as they used them on back-to-back -back plays there on their previous series. Two first downs and Case can have the victory. Eric Olson will... Handed up the middle again. This is Magister, the fullback. And he gets out close to the four-yard line. Case looking at a third down now inside their own five-yard line. But to what a defensive stand by the Spartans. You had the halfback option pass that was knocked down. You had the pass to the back of the end zone that was knocked down. Then the fullback on a draw play was stopped. And then the Wildcat snap. They tried everything. Case with a great defensive stand inside the five. And now a whistle. And a, and timeout. a timeout as the play clock was 
dwindling down for Case. And Which is fine. Now the Spartans have one timeout left. And a penalty there wouldn't have tr truly killed Case either. It would have backed him up a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Now football is marked at the three yard line right now. So Case with their backs to the wall. I would think that Chicago would take their time out following this play to preserve as much time as they could to have offensively. 326 remains here in the fourth quarter on senior day at Case Field. A beautiful day in Cleveland, bright and sunny. Boy, doesn't this set up just like last year. Case trying to run out the clock with a with a three-point lead in Chicago last year. This year leading by six at home, trying to run out the clock and maintain their chances at postseason play. It slipped away last year and ended a 38-game winning streak in the regular season. Case will try and avoid that today here at home. Eric Olson will work from the shotgun in the end zone. Long snap back to him. He's going to punt it away. Case punts it away on third down. It'll be taken by Carrier back at the 45 and works his way back in. I don't, I don't understand. On the uh, return to the 35-yard line. In. I, I don't understand the punt away on third down. I, I would have at least run the ball and forced Chicago to use their final timeout. If they don't use their timeout, it takes 40 more seconds off the clock and you can call a final timeout and use as much time as possible. Here, you gave Chicago the ball back with a timeout. And 3.16 to go. So you lost on both chances. You didn't clear the timeout and you didn't, you didn't spend an extra 40 seconds. Well, they'll snap it back and hand it on a jet sweep over to the far side. This is carried by the backup quarterback turned wide receiver, Andrew Mandato. Well, he and like he, he cannot string it out and turn the corner in case knocks him out of bounds. Well, they're going to say his now forward progress was, yeah, progress was stopped in bounds. Oh. He looked like he wanted to throw the football, didn't yeah, he? Dave? He sure did. I was I was looking for him to cock that arm up there as he was looking downfield, but they stop him at the 41. And it's a loss of five on the play. Well, that front four for Case can just pin their ears back. They know the running game's not there. Back to throw Shelton, middle of the field. It's caught by Cisneros, and he is knocked down by Jordan Banky as he gets to the 26-yard line. It's a pickup of 15 and a first down. So they get the lost yardage back and 10 more for the first down. 2.29 to play in the fourth quarter. Chicago ball. Case leading it by a score of six to nothing. The Spartans punted on third down. <laughs> I hope you have your roll aids handy. First and 10, Chicago from the 26. Look out, Brizolara on the right side. Back to throw Shelton. He'll dump it off to Adarka. Screen pass. Has plenty of running room. Middle of the field. Gets down to the 15-yard line. And he stopped right there. Harris and Ferguson on the stop. He's inside the 15 All at out. the 14-yard line. Case brought both linebackers on a blitz. They brought six, hoping they could get Shelton. He managed to dump it off to Adarka, who had squirmed out of the backfield. 150 to play in the fourth quarter. This one coming right down to the wire. Kevin Shelton takes the snap in the shotgun, looking to the end zone. He's in trouble, and he gets rid of the football. Adam Watson lays a hit on him as he was running out of the pocket and got rid of it to avoid the sack and the loss. It stops the clock with 135 to play in the fourth quarter. And it's second and 10 for Chicago from the case 14 yard line. My oh my, this is a nail biter. Well, between last week's overtime win, the win in Meadville, this afternoon's game. I'm going from gray to white, Ed. Quickly. 
95 seconds left. The snap goes back to Shelton. He's in trouble. Dumps it off again to the tight end. He makes the catch. Gets inside the 10. Down close to the five-yard line. They got a motion call on Chicago. Yeah, Beeman Durfer made the catch, but this one's coming back. The illegal shift. This one will come back to the 19-yard line. Well, Beamendurfer has been an effective option for them today. That time he made the catch, but they walk it off after the penalty. Second and 15, now from the 19-yard line. Shelton has lived in the shotgun. He drops back to throw, goes to the end zone. Brizolara has it knocked away. Ferguson and Calabrese there defensively, and it looked like Dan Calabrese got a hand on that pass. Well, it was in the triple coverage, and Case surely didn't lose track of Dee Brizolara. 107 to play here in the fourth quarter. And I think some of the case players uh, seem to be tiring a little bit. Every time they throw Brizolara's way, he lobbies for a flag. Yeah. And you can just see some of the body language of the case players. I don't think they favor that. Snap goes back to Sheldon. He'll throw it. It's caught by Mandato. And he is tackled immediately after he makes the catch just inside the 15 down to the 14 yard line. We're under a minute to play and a whistle and a timeout taken by Chicago. It's their final timeout and it will be fourth and 10 for the Maroons from the 14 yard line. 53 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Now there's now, no doubt about going for it here. They're down by six, but uh, it's all gonna boil down to one play here. And Brizolara reminds me a lot of the New York Yankees when they get a strike called against him. It couldn't possibly have been a strike. I couldn't possibly have had a ball overthrown or not caught in my direction. Now, that's not to take anything away from Brizolara, but, but every, uh, that's his reaction on every play. Right, every pass play now, he's looking for a call. And I think that takes away from the fact that he can go get the football. And I, I, and I think the more you lobby an official that way, the, the less likely they are to call that that incidental that an over the back he'll probably get a call on but on every call he may not get that call of the the hook or the hand on the back or the the hold well it all comes down to this on senior day a day when the Spartans have sparkled defensively they need to do it one more time fourth and ten from the case 14, Maroons football down by six. Shelton back in the shotgun, goes for the end zone, pass incomplete. They looked for Keegan Cisneros at the goal line. It's deflected away, incomplete, and the Spartans have held, and they will be able to run this one out with 49 seconds left. <laughs> We've seen it go the other way though, Dave, where a team needing to simply run out the clock and a team out of timeouts. Allegheny was attempting to do the same thing in case managed to pull the football away. Chicago cannot stop the clock. And they take a knee. Case will have to run one more play. Well, Case able to hold on fourth and 10 from the 14 yard line. That's twice that Chicago had a fourth down play in the case red zone in the fourth quarter. The other time they stopped uh, Darkwa. And there's the kneel down by Eric Olson. And Case will win this game today in exciting fashion on the backs of the Case defensive unit. They win 6 0. Two field goals by Dan Vassell today make the difference. And on senior day, the Spartans make 17 seniors a winner in their final regular season appearance here at Case Field.